Hey guys, back close painting here. Doing a little bit of a different type of tutorial today. Um, a lot of people have been asking for a airbrush 101 style. So the only way I really know how to do that is if I'm just sitting here kind of talking to you very conversationally. Uh, not really going to have any edits or anything like that. We're just going to talk about airbrushes. I'm sure that um, after watching a lot of my videos or maybe some other people's videos on YouTube, possibly some live streams over on Twitch, you uh, got into airbrushing, have one, want to get better at airbrushing. Maybe you just got an airbrush for Christmas or something like that. Uh, you're trying to figure that cryptic piece of technology out. Um, so we're just going to talk about airbrushing for a little bit. It's um, something I really enjoy doing. I love the way it looks my models. Definitely not for everybody. I understand that uh, some people uh, just love to hand paint stuff and like the techniques and look of hand painting. That's totally fine, but I uh, prefer airbrushing, so that's like the majority of my content is going to have airbrushing stuff in it. We do a lot of hand painting. You can't finish a project without hand painting, so you have to know your good fundamentals and all that kind of stuff, but uh, a lot of the bulk work our projects is done with the airbrush, and a lot of people have been asking me about certain aspects of airbrushing, how I do things, that sort of thing, so we're just going to talk about that a little bit. I have a lot of people ask me what types of airbrush I use. I have three, but I really only use two of them. Um, I had uh, this one originally. This is my Badger Patriot 105. Uh, this is a great airbrush. This is um, probably the airbrush that I've had the longest. It's uh, tough, you know, built like a World War II tank. This thing is, it never breaks, never busts down, barely ever has any uh, maintenance issues or anything like that. And uh, it's a real workhorse brush. So if uh, if you're looking to get into airbrushing for the first time, uh, this is an airbrush that I recommend. It's really good for beginners because you can practice a lot of the basics of airbrushing with it and you can get a ton of work done. Uh, since I have moved on to some uh, different types of airbrushes that are a little bit more advanced, a little bit more detail oriented, uh, this has kind of been on the bench. I only really use it for priming lots of things. So when I batch paint stuff, like I'm building up an army and I need to prime everybody and get a clean base coat on everybody, this is a great airbrush for that. So if your first steps into airbrushing is I want to stop using rattle cam primers, I want to get my imperial fists uh, painted yellow without having the headache of hand painting a bunch of yellow models. Well, it's great because you can prime them with this and you can get your clean yellow base coat put down with the Badger Patriot. It's got a huge cup on it. It's got a really nice wide spray pattern with it. You can do a little bit of detail work. You can get some cleans and it'll highlights on stuff with this, but you're not going to be doing any um, super laser detail highlights like I do in a lot of my videos with my more detailed airbrushes. But uh, I still have this, it's tried and true, it's my workhorse. I highly recommend it. Um, the only downside to the 105 that I personally don't like is that Badger has this weird thing about their guards where they make kind of crappy needle guards. Uh, the You'll notice here, I have the needle actually backed out a little bit. Um, storage because this doesn't really even have a guard on it it's just a open nozzle and uh, we push the needle all the way into uh, its full forward position and lock it in uh, it just sticks right out there and if you're not careful you can drop this or bang it on the side of your desk when you're putting it away and bend that needle it's not the most fragile of needles um, the, the geometry on this guy is actually pretty stout so it's a lot harder to bend the needle from a Patriot than it is to bend something from, say, like a uh, Isotar here that's got like a very uh, long and narrow slope on the geometry of the needle. Whereas this is a little bit more short and stout, so it's harder to uh, harder to bend that needle. Um, my second airbrush is the Badger Sotar 2020. This is um, my Go to, I basically do every single project with this airbrush, uh, with the exception of when I base coat a ton of models, like I'm working on my Orc army right now, I had to paint like 30 Gretchen and another 10 uh, Commandos and a bunch of other stuff. Like I'll bust out the Patriot for that and I'll prime everybody with that and I'll get a base coat on there. And then when I want to go ahead and do all my highlights, I'll switch over to the Sotar because I have a lot more control. 
and um, this is a detail oriented brush it's designed to be a uh, very small detail pencil line airbrush is another word that uh, people talk about when they uh, describe this this was actually redesigned by Badger um, I think a couple of years ago the uh, initial Sotar 2020 did not get very good reviews uh, if I remember right, there was an old video from Lester Bursley where he was talking about a ton of different Badger airbrushes, and he said he hated the Sotar 2020 uh, back then, but that was like 2012, 2013, and um, it's been redesigned since then. It's amazing. I love this airbrush. It's by far the best airbrush I've ever owned, uh, the best airbrush I've ever used, and I've used a lot of different ones from a lot of different brands, and I, I really, really like this one. Again, if it has any downsides, the only thing is that the guard, well, this one actually has a guard. I'm not the biggest fan of these open prong guards. I would much rather uh, something like a cone, uh, just that it totally protects it. But, you know, this is better than nothing. And uh, at least if you end up do bending the, uh, the seven songs, something like that. So if you do have a catastrophe, it's not going to be the end of the world. You're not going to break the bank trying to get a new rear airbrush. A um, couple of other side things that I have when I'm airbrushing that are, in my opinion, pretty mandatory. Uh, I've got Vallejo Airbrush Flow Improver. This is a clear liquid medium. I use this to thin every single paint that I put into the airbrush, with the one exception being primer. If I'm actually putting a primer on a bare model, I do not thin that out with anything. Uh, we'll talk about that here in a second, but Flow Improver, this is what I use to thin paint in the airbrush. I don't use water, I don't use airbrush thinner, I use Flow Improver, and it's just, it has the best results, and it uh, gives you the most work time because this is actually a drying retarder as well as a thinner. So if you're going to get into airbrushing, don't use water, don't use um, weird at-home mixtures of Windex and other crazy business, just use, use Flow Improver. Like, I guarantee you, you're going to have the least amount of headaches. It's going to work the best for you. Trust me on this. Flow Improver is where to go. It's, this is the Vallejo version. Other companies make similar stuff. Um, I think Liquitex makes another version that people uh, use. It's pretty popular. If uh, you're incredibly brand loyal, you can use Lamia Medium, but Lamia Medium comes in tiny little pots and it's really expensive, whereas you're getting like, I think, 300% more. Uh, Flow Improver in a bottle for like $12, then you're getting it a tiny little pot for like $5.99. So I highly recommend just going onto Amazon, getting a bottle of Flow Improver and trying it out. It's like the real deal. I do in fact have airbrush thinner. I almost never use it though. I've had this same bottle uh, for over a year. Um, and you can see that it's almost, almost at the top. I almost never use it. Literally the only thing I use airbrush thinner for is when I use matte varnish. And when I use matte varnish, I find the matte varnish kind of sprays better and gets a better finish when using airbrush thinner as opposed to flow improver. I talk about this in my videos and on my live stream. Uh, when I use gloss varnish, I like to use flow improver. I just think it works a little bit better. And when I use matte varnish, I use thinner. Uh, some people like to use thinner with their normal paints. I find that, especially with lighter pigmented paints, when you use airbrush thinner, it gets a very fragile bond to the model, and you can re it. The paint can rub off really easily, and I don't know why. It's always whenever I use lightly pigmented paints from um, companies like Vallejo and Army Painter in the Citadel, like I'll spray um, something like a bone color, like I'll paint a skull or something, and. When I use thinner, I'll notice that like even like the barest hint of moisture from a brush or something like that can just like wipe it right off, even if it's been sitting for five or six hours. Like I'm not entirely sure what the chemical breakdown on all that is, but I've just noticed that with lighter pigmented paints, the thinner gets a much more fragile bond when you spray the paint with that as opposed to flow improver. Like it just works better. I don't know. I'm I'm not a chemist. I don't, I don't know any of that stuff. I'm just a guy who paints stuff. So if you know, maybe you can figure it out. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Go with flow improvement. Oh, yeah. The other thing is some cleaner. Um, I know this says cleaner uh, from Vallejo. You can use this. 
I'm not the biggest fan of the airbrush cleaner made by Vallejo. I don't think it's strong enough to do a lot of stuff. And the reason I just have cleaner written on this is because as you can see, these bottles all look the same. What I actually use is a product from Tamaya. And I just put it in that bottle because it's easier. So I have X20A thinner. This is acrylic paint thinner. Um, you can see that it's the, uh, it's the chemical, it's like a alcohol substance. I don't think it's because this one was actually from Japan and not from here. This is like actual paint thinner, like for lacquer paints, for Tamaya lacquer paints. Do not thin paint with this because they don't mix well. But these, the, this and water-based acrylic paint from Vallejo, like they don't play well together. Like you try to mix a full pot of airbrush paint with this X28 thinner, it'll turn it into this goopy mess because it's like actively breaking it down. And eh, it's something you don't want to deal with, I'm telling you. But when you rinse out the airbrush and all you have left is just like some little watery pigment and stuff like there down in the deep recesses or like maybe stuck in the nozzle when you're trying to actually clean your airbrush out between colors or you're trying to clean it out uh, after a day of airbrushing or something like that this is this is what i use because with a little bit of this in there you can stir it around with an old brush or something like that knock all that pigment out of there and it'll It'll break up those those bonds in there and it won't want to stick inside of the airbrush. It'll break it away from the sides of the airbrush and you can spray it out or dump it or whatever. Like, and it just works really great. Um, I started using this when I was painting other types of model kits with lacquer paints and I never looked back. Like it just, this is a really great cleaner for acrylic, uh, water-based acrylic paints when you're painting your miniatures. It just cleans out the airbrush really, really good. That's why I recommend it. It's pretty inexpensive. Tamaya is a company that makes a lot of great hobby stuff, but because it's not marketed towards miniatures, it, not a lot of people buy it. There's a lot of uh, brand bias in the miniatures community. I'm not really sure why, because there's a lot of people that want to save money. And to my mind, if you wanted to save money, I don't know why you're buying all this overpriced stuff that's labeled for miniatures when other companies are making the same stuff marketed to scale model builders were way cheaper and most of the time they're better products so that's why i recommend a lot of tamaya stuff um, check it out on amazon and you can see their, their range of stuff they have over there and you'll find some really good stuff most of my clippers and other hobby tools i get from tamaya because they're actually really high quality at a much better price than stuff that's marketed to miniatures To help clean stuff out, I have one of these bottles. This is just a uh, transparent water bottle with a dog leg nozzle on it. Uh, if you are looking for these, I always tell people my live show, um, go to Amazon, type in tattoo bottle, hit enter. It's usually the first or second or third uh, search on Amazon and you'll find a bunch of different types of these. They're just little water squirt bottles and I use them to clean out paint in between colors because what you can do is just give it a little jet of water into the cup, it kind of breaks the, the paint off of the wall, it gets stirred up in there and you can dump it out and spray a little water through it. Um, you can cycle through colors really quickly. Uh, one thing I hear a lot of people talk about when they don't want to do airbrushing is like, oh, it takes so long to switch between colors. Like it takes so long to clean it out. It really doesn't. If you've ever seen any of my live shows, it takes me like less than 30 seconds to get to another color. It's really easy. Because all you do is you've got paint in your airbrush. Like, oh, okay, I need to switch from like green to blue. Or I'm going from a darker blue to a lighter blue. Whatever. So you just get it. Get your little squirt of water in there. Dump it out. I got a little towel on a bench over here. You can use a, an old like Tupperware. Something like that with water in it. You use that. Dump all your paint water in there. And then go pour it out later. Toss it in the yard. Or down the sink. Whatever you want to do. And then it, you know, it might take you, you know, two or possibly three of that to get it kind of rinsed out, but it's so fast. Like it's so ridiculously fast to do it that way. And if people, more people knew about that, I think there wouldn't be that stigma of, oh, it takes so long to switch paint colors and all that stuff. Like you just gotta have the tools and you gotta have the knowledge. So I'm hoping that like, maybe I can open some eyes to this video and some, some of the airbrush one-on-one stuff. But, uh, 
blow improver, thinner, a good cleaner, little water bottle, and uh, maybe an old Tupperware or like hold it up towel or something on the side of your desk. You can pour that paint. Water. It helps a ton. It's crazy. Like it helps a lot. Uh, before we get into breaking down the airbrush, I'm going to talk about some other stuff. I've got my airbrush hose here. This is a hose made by Grex. You can probably tell because it's that Grex green everything. But this is a good threaded hose um, or braided hose. I think it's, it's called a braided hose. I've had this forever. I bought this hose with my very first airbrush um, almost 10 years ago and uh, I still have it. It works great. These braided hoses are awesome. Uh, and then I have the Grex GMAC uh, dial. Uh, I bought this before they rebranded it to the GMAC or whatever it is now. It's like G hyphen MAC, but you can still find these. Uh, this is just a uh, quick disconnect. See there, quick disconnect with a PSI dial. So a lot of people in comments of my videos say, oh, what PSI do you spray at? What PSI do you spray at? What PSI do you spray at? I don't know. <laughs> it's it's longer than that, but my compressor is set right at about 21, 22 PSI. Uh, and then I use this guy, dial it in where I want it. So obviously if it's 100% open, if I open it all the way out, I'm spraying it at like 21, 22. But then when I do detail work and I get closer to the model, I will dial it down so that it sprays softer. You can get it all the way closed if you want to. Barely open it up to get a a little puff of air out of there and this is awesome because you have direct control over the psi at your fingertips rather than having to like pull your compressor crank on the psi dial and hope that it's at the right thing and then like spray it oh it's still a little bit too harsh bend back over crank it down again nobody wants to do that and nobody got time for that just get you one of these little psi dials with a quick disconnect it's a good tool it's high quality i think they have increased the price since I bought mine. When I bought this, they were like 10 bucks on Amazon. I think they're selling them for like 25 now. Um, but I mean, this is a good quality tool and I'm perfectly okay spending $25 on something like this that is you know, stainless steel. It's not gonna break. You can beat the hell out of it. I've had this dial since I bought this hose and it's about 10 years old. And it's still going strong, nothing's wrong with it. Never had to take it apart, never really had to clean it, nothing. It's a good quality piece uh, for your setup. And I highly recommend people get it because it's another quality of life thing. Um, you can make airbrushing ridiculously easy if just uh, get those small things that are quality of life increases to make all of the headache about some of the airbrushing stuff just go away, like it becomes non-issue. And having to deal with PSI and all that kind of stuff, uh, it really helps having this little disconnect. So um, if you want something like that, I said pretty much everything that I've shown you in this video, you can get on Amazon. All you have to do is search it, find it great. Um, I will say that you uh, are going to need an adapter if you use Badger airbrushes. I think uh, what's, there's another company that needs adapters for standard standardized hose fittings you can see that like the badger standard fittings are really small and you have to get one of these uh, adapters to go into the quick disconnect um, and i just take this adapter and like switch it between, you know. uh, since i have bought in mine they've gotten a little bit better about the search terms on amazon so you can actually just find adapter like standard fitting adapter for Badger airbrushes. You don't even have to like look at the measurements or anything like that. Um, so it's it's a lot easier to get these pieces uh, to go on these standardized hose fittings for the standardized compressors because I think it's supposed to be like a quarter inch or a half inch. I'm not, I don't really remember because I haven't measured it in a while. But for those of you who want to know, uh, About a half about a half inch i think this is a half inch fitting or just about like pretty darn close to a half inch yeah and then the badger standard fitting quarter inch quarter inch to a half inch adapter but like i said if you search on amazon i was literally looking 
uh, on there yesterday to make sure that all the stuff that I talk about can be found on Amazon. And you can literally just type in standardized hose for Badger airbrush adapter or any other search term regarding those words and it'll work fine. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, I usually talk about my primer and stuff in the videos. If you have forgotten or don't want to go back and reference another video, I use Steinal Res Primer, S-T-Y-N-Y-L-R-E-Z. Steinal Res, it's made by Bradger Airbrush Company. This is, in my opinion, one of the best uh, ready to go airbrush primers in the biz. I think it's hands down better than the Vallejo Airbrush Primer. Um, goes on thinner it has a better bond it doesn't clog your airbrush it doesn't dry out as fast all that good stuff Steinal res is the way to go if you don't want to get into uh lacquers and stuff like that there's a couple of companies that make primer for model kits and things like that but they're like a, a lacquer style primer um all clad 2 it's a really really good primer i think it's the best primer i've ever put through my airbrush as far as like easy to work with and the finish that you get on the model with that primer it's so thin and so smooth and so perfect but it's a lacquer so you have to wear a mask and you have to use like alcohol thinner lacquers they're they're a whole different bag we don't really do those in the miniatures community wouldn't worry about it too much but it's out there i think all clad 2 is pretty good if you want to try it all right so we can get into what we're going to be doing with the airbrush so every airbrush as it's different pieces, you can break it down. You got your front assemblies. This is like the nozzle cover. Usually they break into two pieces like this. So this is like the outside cover, this is the inside cover. Um, usually when I'm cleaning stuff, I only break this part down into two pieces if I'm doing a deep clean. Um, whenever I need to do a deep clean with the airbrush, I simple green. It's a household, uh, Cleaning agent on toxic. Um, it will not melt plastic or resin or anything. You can use it to strip models. Uh, you can use it to clean your house. Like it's the all-in-one. I mean, when I was in the army, we used to clean our guns with it. It's that good. Um, and it's really cheap. So if I'm doing a deep clean, I'll just disassemble everything, put it in a cup, put the simple green in there, leave it overnight, and usually that'll get every bit of gunk out of there. You can see that my my Patriot's pretty dirty. I haven't given it a good while probably need to do that but i don't plan on using it for anything anytime soon so i don't think it's it and you can pull the nozzle out they usually just seat in there that um this airbrush is a really big ass nozzle uh sotar we'll take apart in a second it has a, like a really tiny nozzle so you gotta be careful you don't lose these they're very very important don't lose then uh, trigger assembly should come right out as long as there's not a needle in there. Back that out, and then there's your like your little trigger spring. Take this part. This is your spring assembly for the trigger mechanism. Spring tension for the needle. This breaks down into smaller parts, but you don't ever really need to take it down any uh, any smaller than that because you can see it's just like it's spring loaded in there you can take off this chuck and pull it out like that spring it there's your uh, trigger push and that's about all you're gonna need to do like that's about as much as you need to ever break it down um i think you can take out this piece here but you need like a special tool I, I've literally never had to disassemble this assembly and an airbrush to deep clean it. It always just, it's always worked. Um, so I've never worried about breaking it down any more than this. That's about all you need to do. And just put in a, a cup of simple green or like a Tupperware or something. And uh, should be fine. You can get a, a kit for uh, cleaning out the airbrush, they come on like a little little ring with some uh, like fuzzy rods on there that you can use to like uh, shove down in these holes and stuff to um, brush it out. Those are pretty cheap. You can find those too. Pretty easy to get. On the uh, Sotar, everything is very similar. Um, again, your needles, needle nozzle is going to have 
assembly up here. This one does not break into two pieces, I don't think. Yeah, so this is like a single piece. Um, I think I can disassemble it more if I were to really force it, but... Um, you can see the nozzle on this guy is really small. This is what you don't want to you keep track of stuff. Not that. But it breaks down very similar. You can just pull all that stuff off of there. And you've got like a chuck at the back so you can pull the needle out. It's back on. Very careful with this one because that, that nozzle can get away from you. Uh, some airbrushes will have a assembly like this on the back where you can dial this in and what that does is it makes it, uh, it decreases the amount of travel your trigger can have. So the more you work this down, the less far back sure. and that The reason you do that is because say like you're working with a color and you're doing some, some highlighting work and you're like, okay, I know that the proper spray pattern for this color that I want to get on this model means that I only want my trigger to come back to right there. Okay, And you know that's like the perfect one and you don't want to mess it up. You want to take human error out of the equation as much as possible because um, trigger control can be tricky. Not the easiest thing to learn. So if you know that you want to get to right there, what you can do is torque this chuck down and it'll stop it right where you need it to be so that way you can't fat finger it and go like a huge spray and like screw up whatever you're working on you bring the trigger back so much it's pretty handy um i don't really use that feature a whole lot uh, unless i'm doing batch painting stuff like if i need to do like a face highlight on like 20 guys and i know that my face highlight needs to be right there well i'll just dial that shut down so that way i can just go um i can just hold the trigger open at that point um just spray in and not spray any air because pressing down and back is so I can just get all my models and just you know, press down in the air. Okay, I press down with the air, press down with the air. Paint is consistent single time, so it can be useful. And of course, you can pull this off, you can pull this assembly off, and it's got almost exactly this ring tension for the needle. It's the same stuff. And that's about it. Like, I'm not really going to talk about techniques or anything, because we talk about techniques in the video. I don't really want to start painting something that'll make this video even longer than I'm sure it already is. Um, I just kind of wanted to talk about some of the stuff you don't really think about. Talking about airbrushes, like how to break them down, how to clean it. What you should have like on your desk to help make airbrushing less of a headache because I mean like if you can just cut out all the things that make it difficult and make it a headache then it's actually a really fun experience like you could, it's very enjoyable so with all those little tools and um, helpful additions like all your flow improver and your little squirt bottles and um, having something like an old toothbrush that you can uh, you know clean the, the front of your airbrush off get any dried paint off of there because sometimes you'll have paint built up on the needle that's dry you just need to like knock it off of there having an old toothbrush is extremely helpful something like that definitely helpful um i'm probably gonna go into painting stuff like an airbrush 101 style painting video as a uh, next video that we do on the channel uh this one is just kind of like hey i got an airbrush uh how do, how do I how do, how do I do how do I do the brush thing? Um, so hopefully that helps. Uh, like I said, if anything that I talk about in this video, if you go to Amazon and you type in those search terms, you should be able to find it really easily. Uh, I looked there myself the other day just to make sure that everything that I had that I think is kind of a should have item on the desk is there on Amazon. Uh, the only thing that I don't think I've talked about in any of my painting videos on YouTube is um, how I mount models for airbrushing. This is a rubber stopper. You know, you're supposed to put it, put it in a piece of glassware, something like that, like a set. Um, these are awesome. They're heavy. They're dense. You can hold on to them. They're great for holding models. Basically, all I do is just get a piece of paper clip. I'll drill a hole in the model. 
somewhere that's uh, you know never see or that's gonna be like a connecting joint or something like that I'll get a piece of paper clip shove the paper clip down into the rubber eh, like that and then sub assemblies for airbrushing and the rubber is great because you don't have to glue it um, a lot of people use cork I used to use cork a lot the problem with cork is that when you push something down in there it doesn't create a neat little hole it just kind of pushes the layers of cork out of the way and it kind of like just breaks it out of the way and then what happens is your pen will just like free spin so you'll hold it and it'll just spin around in there and it won't hold if you turn it upside down it'll probably fall out uh, so you have to super glue it and when you super glue something into cork and you're like okay well now i need to pull this part out and you pull it out it just rips out huge chunks of cork and then after a few projects, that cork is like, oh, okay, well, I gotta throw it in the trash and buy more. Um, I'm not a fan of that. It's messy. It's you know, wasteful. So I went to these. These are great because no matter how many times you put holes in this with your little paper clip, um, it'll always hold up and it won't degrade. And it has friction holds from the rubber onto the metal, so that it won't free spin and it won't fall out. Um, usually I actually have to use a pair of pliers to push the, the piece of paper clip down into the rubber and then I have to use a pair of pliers to pull it out because that's how tight the friction hold is with the rubber things. And they're really heavy so you can have it down and it's really hard to tip over models. Most of the time you're not going to be painting a model that's heavier than a dense piece of rubber. It's one of my bigger ones. Um, the ones I have the most of are these littler ones. There's a 7. So if you go to Amazon, type in rubber stopper number seven, uh, you'll find these. And if I remember, it's like an inch and three quarters on the base by uh, an inch and a quarter by an inch and a quarter or some such. I can measure it. Yeah, so it's like inch and a half by one inch by uh, inch and a quarter. Those are the dimensions. Can't find the number sevens. Uh, can't find the number sevens. You can just look by uh, dimensions. Remember, it's uh, inch and a inch and a half, one inch. Super easy. Super super easy. Um, I've talked about those a lot on my live streams, and uh, a number of people have picked them up and seem to really like it. Uh, so I haven't had any complaints about people who picked up the rubber stoppers so that's something you want to get into if you want some some better handy holdy things for painting your models uh, or doing sub assemblies i'm in the rubber stoppers i have to have little bits and pieces of work everywhere i don't, I don't like dealing with that desk i think that's about it um like i said Next video, we're probably going to go over a more painting-oriented video, and uh, with the painting-oriented video, I'll uh, I'll do some editing. I'll do some uh, some cuts in that, really like kind of short and to the point. But uh, this type of video, where we're talking about all these products and kind of like what to do with your airbrush and how to clean, I figured uh, I just kind of do consciousness, like conversationally, well, and just and to see where it goes and see what happens. So I hope that um, I covered a bunch of stuff. Uh, I'm sure that because I'm such a bonehead, I probably forgot some things. So if you if you have any questions and uh, you want to get into airbrushing or you like I said, if you just got an airbrush and you're like, I don't know, instructions unclear, uh, just ask me a question. I'll be more than happy to answer it. I, I try to answer questions as much as possible. Um, I. I think I'm pretty good about doing it on the YouTube channel. Um, the only time I won't answer a question is if like five different people have already asked that question on a video uh, and I answered it once, then you know, look around the comments to the same question 50 times. And uh, from now on, if people ask, airbrush do I use? I'm just gonna give them the link to the video. Talk about all the airbrushes. So I think that's about it. I'll catch y'all next time. Uh, if you're still watching on YouTube, you haven't come over to Twitch, come over to Twitch. It's a no-brainer. Twitch is where all the fun is, man. Like, what are you doing? Stop watching on YouTube like a hobo. Type in the URL for Twitch when I go live. Come watch the live show. I guarantee you won't be disappointed. It's better than YouTube in every single way. It's the same HD video. 
with the same high level content except you get to see my ugly face and and talk to me and ask me questions and i talk to you and i paint stuff live it's awesome we're working on a really cool orc model right now guy right here for awesome folk orc guy if you don't go to Twitch, you don't get to see him painted, so you should go to Twitch and, and watch him get painted. Alright, I'm gonna get out of here. Catch you guys next time. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments below.